Today we're going to talk about why I believe Bitcoin and Ethereum could see lows around $10,000 and $600 respectively, and how I plan on investing in crypto over the next 14 months. A quick disclaimer, this video contains market commentary, not financial advice. It's just the opinion of some guy on the internet, so keep that in mind. This video is a follow-up on the video that I posted roughly four weeks ago that discussed why I believe the Bitcoin investment narrative has shifted from what it was in 2018 and especially from 2014. In 2014, most of the Bitcoin bear market could be attributed to the largest exchange, Mt. Gox, going bankrupt following a high-profile hack. In 2018, some of the Bitcoin bear market could be explained by financial tightening, but there were still substantial crypto-specific catalysts, like more exchange hacks, that drove the market down. In 2022, the bear market narrative has shifted to being almost entirely about the macro investing environment. Now, in my prior video here, I highlighted that we have not seen the end of the risk-off trade, and thus we could see lower prices in the crypto market. And we now have more information about that macro environment that further supports this viewpoint. Before we get started here though, consider subscribing to my channel. I played the quantity media game over four years ago and I don't plan on returning to it. I only upload now when I feel that I have something interesting to say. So hit that bell icon and let's get started here. The main headwind for risk assets is the Fed's monetary policy. If they continue to tighten, I suspect the market will continue to go down. And in the past month, it's become very clear to me why the broader market continues to go down, even though the Fed is doing exactly what it said it would do. And that's the fact that many people expect the Fed to pivot. Now, the reason so many people expect the Fed to pivot is because number one, commodity and asset prices, especially oil, and this is a chart of oil since I made that last video, are both declining, which puts downward pressure on inflation. Number two, the increased interest rates are increasing the interest expense on their debt obligations and is decreasing their long-term revenue. So in other words, some people expect the Fed to pivot sooner rather than later, both because number one, forward-looking indicators, such as market indicators like we're looking at here, suggest that inflation is slowing, and number two, because the Fed needs looser policy to survive. When the August inflation report came out earlier this month slightly higher than expected, it is clear the reason the market declined, not out of fear of inflation, but out of fear of more aggressive interest rate hikes and tightening policy. Now, the day that that inflation report came out, the market completely erased any possibility of a 50 basis point hike at the September FOMC meeting and even considered a small chance of a 100 basis point hike, which we have not seen since the 1980s. In my last video, I showed the probability the market was pricing for different interest rates at future FOMC meetings. At the time, the dominant market view was that the Fed funds rate would increase to 375 to 400 basis points by February 2023, and at that point, the Fed would hold interest rates steady. Now the market assigns a 0% probability of that happening and expects rates to stabilize around 450 to 475 basis points next year. Two main catalysts drove the change in the market view. One is the inflation report on September 13th, and two is the FOMC meeting on September 21st. Together, these painted a picture that the Fed is going to tighten more than the market originally anticipated, and for longer. In my opinion, the Fed will continue to be aggressive in its tightening, as pretty much all of their comments over the last couple of months have consistently been hawkish. Plus, I wouldn't be all that surprised if inflation is more persistent than people expect it to be, given how much they've printed over the last couple of years. So what has happened to risk assets since I uploaded that video on August 30th? Well, interestingly enough, they haven't suffered substantial, unique losses. They've effectively lost in line with the rest of the market. For example, growth stocks have only had slightly higher declines than value stocks. And that's not shown on this chart here, but I looked at it earlier. Bitcoin is actually down less than the S&P 500, although it's worth noting that Ethereum is down nearly twice as much as the S&P 500, and some of that can be attributed to the merge. The NASDAQ is roughly in line with the S&P 500, and if we look at credit spreads, they have widened slightly over the last month, but for the most part, they have stayed flat. So if we look at risk assets as a whole, they really haven't been hit that much harder over the past month, 
in spite of the market assigning a higher chance of tightening, which should have a larger impact on risk assets. So here's where I stand currently. I think risk assets have more room to decline. Bitcoin has quote unquote only declined by 75% in the current bear market. In the 2014 and 2018 bear markets, Bitcoin declined by 85%. And in both of those bear markets, they didn't have financial tightening of the scale that we're currently seeing in 2022. An 85% decline in Bitcoin from its high of $69,000 places it close to $10,000. An 85% decline in Ethereum from its peak of approximately $4,900 places it closer to $700. So why did I pick $600 in the title? Well, the $600 number itself is arbitrary and mostly used to illustrate the point that I think that Bitcoin dominance is going to increase in this cycle still. And so if Bitcoin declines by 85%, I suspect that Ethereum will decline by more than 85%. These are not hard numbers to look at as the bottom of the cycle, and I want to make that clear. It is a fruitless endeavor trying to find the bottom of any cycle. I use these numbers to anchor my sentiment on the market. Here's what I'm looking at as my current strategy. My crypto portfolio is mostly in cash right now. I intend to start dollar cost averaging, which simply means to buy at regular intervals into both Bitcoin and Ethereum and only Bitcoin and Ethereum once Ethereum reaches around $1,000 or approximately where it was back in June. The S&P 500 is close to its June levels right now, while Ethereum is still hovering around 20 to 30% above that level. If that happens, I intend to buy a mix of Bitcoin and Ethereum with about 20 to 25% of my crypto portfolio cash. Now the mix in terms of how much Bitcoin and how much Ethereum I intend to buy will be determined based off of Bitcoin's dominance. Anything below 45 to 50% and I intend to buy a greater allocation of Bitcoin than Ethereum because I expect Bitcoin to appreciate against Ethereum. I then plan to start DCAing or dollar cost averaging the remaining 75 to 80% of my crypto portfolio cash four times over my estimate of the 24 month bear market length. Now, in my last video, I mentioned that I don't think any bear market in risk assets is going to last longer than 24 months based off for the last 100 years of history or so. It could last longer than 24 months, but most of the time, bear markets last less than 24 months. So in other words, if Ethereum reached $1,000 tomorrow, and we've been in a bear market for 10 months already since December or November of last year, that would mean that I'm estimating that there's 14 months left in the bear market. We divide that by four. And that basically means that I would DCA into Bitcoin and Ethereum once every three and a half months. Now, let's say instead that Ethereum doesn't reach $1,000 until two months from now, then I would DCA over 12 months because that would mean that we've been in a bear market for 12 months already. And the number four here is somewhat arbitrary. I'm choosing it because it's quarterly, it just feels like a good number to pick. Now, if we ever never reach $1,000 in Ethereum, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get there in terms of what I intend on doing there because I haven't really made a plan for that. I don't know what I'm going to be doing in that case. And uh, this is mostly a new strategy for me. In the past, I've tried to time exact bottoms and fully utilize my cash at certain price levels, and I've done a lot of active swing trading. I've started to accept now that attempting to identify exact bottoms is a difficult if not an impossible endeavor. So my goal now instead is to estimate the bottom and then use those estimates as an anchor for when I should start DCAing into crypto. I found that pretty much all of my largest gains in crypto have been from buying and holding during bear markets and selling during bull markets. Timing bottoms and tops has never been necessary for profitability and it's never even been necessary for large gains. For the most part, as I mentioned, all of my largest gains have actually been from buying and holding rather than swing trading and trying to time the market. So I want to try something a little bit more passive this time around. One final thing I want to make clear is that I still find crypto fundamentally overvalued. It does not provide utility anywhere close to the amount of money that is flowing in the ecosystem. And I know this is a dead horse to beat here, so just hear me through. Crypto is far riskier than stocks which have underlying cash flows that support the investment you're making. I want to make clear that I still consider crypto speculative in nature and that there is a possibility that the entire market collapses for an extended period of time beyond what we have seen in the traditional 
four year cycles so far and beyond what we have seen in the bear markets for risk assets in the past. Now my current crypto investment thesis relies on the idea that risk assets will only stay in a bear market for two years at most before stabilizing and eventually growing. However, there is a chance that investors become disillusioned from crypto and opt for other risk assets in the future whenever this rebound happens. Now, my bet is that won't happen because crypto is starting to become entrenched in the economy as it is now responsible for thousands of jobs and billions of dollars worth of venture capital, which sort of creates an artificial bottom. It's important to realize, though, that without any intrinsic value, there is no true bottom for crypto like there is for stocks. Now, let me know in the comments what you think about crypto and particularly Bitcoin and Ethereum moving forward. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Uh, are you bullish? Are you bearish? Uh, one difficult part for me right now is that the overwhelming majority of the media is negative about markets moving forward, which makes me want to take the opposite side and be positive. I just don't think we're there quite yet. If you found this video interesting, then you should really check out the video I referenced several times throughout this video that breaks down the foundation of my investment thesis. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.